This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Hello, welcome to Stockbox. Today I'm speaking with Ben Turney, the CEO of Cavango Resources. Hi Ben, how are you doing today? I'm great, thanks Pam. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you here. And you're also back in the UK. You're in London at the moment. Um, I know that you have recently moved out to Zimbabwe, uh, working on one of the projects of uh, one of the one of the Kavango projects. But uh, how are you finding it back here? It's hard. I mean, it's a bit to be honest, sort of home from home. It's like the weather we're used to back in Zim now. So I'm in London at the moment, um, doing just a bit of a roadshow, talking to various investors and, and showing people what we've actually been achieving in the field. Dave Catterall actually flew back from Botswana at the end of last week. So I've, I've met up with Dave in London and it's been an opportunity for the two of us just to go and talk to people, give a bit more context about what we've been doing and, and why Dave is so excited about what he's seen in the field on his recent trip. Wonderful. Well, of course, we were talking about Zimbabwe there, but let's just for a moment focus on the Karakubis Copper Project in Botswana's Kalahari Copper Belt. Now, only last week you announced that field analysis of drill cores taken from this target confirms the presence of copper silver mineralizing system at Karakubis. Now, today's RNS, you've announced that you have 90 targets uh, that are ongoing uh, processing and interpretation of inversions. Tell us a little bit more about that. Now, this is pretty big news, isn't it? Can you explain in layman terms what this means? Well, it's very big news for the company, uh, Pam. So what, what you normally tend to see with a lot of exploration companies, and I've got to be honest, I've, I've had to do this in the past with Kavango. A lot of companies will will talk up front that they've got 90 targets, 100 targets, whatever it is. And there's a lot of arm waving about that to try and generate investor interest. Of course, the, the risk with that approach is that if you put the cart before the horse, you know, as we've seen, unfortunately, with Kavango in the past, and you announce the targets before you actually drill them, and then you find that your drill results don't meet your pre-drill expectations, you're then in a position where you're having to row back on what you've said, and um, and obviously is, is, is very difficult. But unfortunately, it is a function of the market for most companies because that's how they raise money and that's how they deliver their programs quite slowly. We're in the incredibly fortunate position where with the backing of Pure Bond as our major strategic cornerstone shareholder, they've put significant finance into the business, which means we're able to run our programs as these programs should be run. And so what we did was we decided this time, rather than announce all the targets at first, we actually wanted to see what our drill data told us to validate our model and validate our targeting. So the reason we've been able to announce these, these targets so quickly um, in response to, to last week's news is because we'd already done most of the work. And what we were delighted about was that with our first drill target um, that we tested with two holes that completed last week and with the announcement we put out last Monday, we already met the the, the stage gates and the milestones and a proven uh, copper mineralizing system through our ground. But more importantly, that we've got functioning trap sites. Now, the reason that we felt that that trap site would be there was based on our interpretation of the geophysics data. So obviously, our, our confidence now in the original 90 targets that, that Dave and the team and Jeremy and Hillary had, had identified. We're much more confident about those because we've obviously we validated it with with the drill data from last week. So, so this really is a, a major move forward for the company. And the great thing about it is it's only over about 20, less than 25% of our ground. So we've only acquired the data and processed the data that we need, the airborne data and the ground geophysics to be able to identify these drill targets. So the, the prospectivity of the of the Karakubis block is absolutely enormous. And it's been great hearing Dave extol the virtues of it to, to various investors we've been talking about and being able to hear his enthusiasm for it. So, yeah, this really is looking like it's turning into something very, very big. Indeed. Now, out of these 90, 10 priority targets have been identified for drilling in your RNS. And you say in today's RNS, I quote, has validated the exploration model with three distinct achievements. Can you expand on these achievements and what exactly does it mean? Okay, so the, the three achievements in order were, first of all, uh, we wanted to test the stratigraphy, so the rock layers. And in particular, we wanted to see if we were in what's called the lower Dakar for, uh, formation. 
The lower Dakar is where you find all of the um, commercial copper deposits in the Kalahari Copper Belt, both in uh, Botswana and in Namibia. So we ticked that box. We're in the lower Dakar. Secondly, uh, we wanted to test that we had the right structural controls, um, so within that rock formation. So where the rocks have been bent and folded and subjected to tectonic forces and broken up, this is what's created the fracture paths for mineralization to pass through, but also what we're calling the trap sites for that mineralization to accumulate in in large scale what we hope of modern day commercial uh, deposits now we so the we proved in the first um, hole that we have the functioning trap sites so what we we saw in terms of the mineralization and how it was accumulating we know that our interpretation of the trap sites was correct the third milestone was the hydrothermal um, alteration now you need the hydrothermal alteration because that is the way in which the, the copper and the silver would have been transported through the region. These superheated fluids that pass through the region, past, go past those trap zones, and it's in those trap zones that the mineralization drops out of the, out of the mix and, and forms the, the large scale deposits. So that was the objective of this, this drill campaign. But we actually also achieved a fourth major milestone in that we hit a combination of copper, silver, lead, and zinc and it's it's not economic at this stage we know that we were very clear in the announcement but what this is telling us is that this is the right combination of metallic elements for the large scale copper deposits that are seen throughout the kalahari copper belt so for us to have hit the combination of these four elements that tells us that we are in a mineralizing system and on the edges of what will hopefully prove to be a commercial mineralizing system. So, so the, the stage gates that we've hit, we hit in our first target, we achieved in our first target, which has elevated the drill program and means that we can now move forward with a great deal of confidence in our ability to select these drill targets and hopefully that will take us towards making a discovery. Wonderful. Well, the project does appear to be moving at a very fast rate. Two holes have already been drilled and you're on to the third already. What are the next steps? So what we're doing now, um, we're going to be talking more about vectoring as we move forward. So the way that this type of exploration works in a, in a greenfields project is if you imagine, if you want to track a mobile phone signal, the way that you would track a mobile phone signal would be to get signals from, let's say, three different masts, phone masts, which would give you a triangulation point, which would give you a, an estimate of where that mobile phone is. Well, it's basically the same principle that we're deploying in the Kalahari Copper Belt. So what we're doing is, is creating through our drill um, program now is we're going to be creating the equivalent of a series of metaphorical um, phone masts. What those phone masks will give us is they will tell us about the rock layers, the, the geometry of those rock layers, the, 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 the constituency of them, so the, the mineralization that occurs within there. And from that, what we are hoping and we're expecting is that we'll then be able to deduct whereabouts in the system are we? Are we getting nearer or further away from what will be economic accumulations of materials so of, of copper? So in other words, if the copper signals are intensifying and the lead and the zinc are decreasing, then that tells us we're getting towards what we hope will be a commercial discovery. If, of course, the lead and the zinc are increasing and the copper is decreasing, that will tell us that we're getting further away. So, I mean, this is obviously in very simple terms. But so the next steps in the remainder of our drill campaign, we want to build this series of, of, of phone, phone masts to enable us to triangulate in on the copper deposits. And I think this is a key point, Pam, that people need to understand is that we're not after just one discovery. If you look at the ground that MMG has and the ground that Sandfire has, they both have multiple um, major mines within their ground. And our land package is, um, is of, a, of a similar size and with what looks like similarly um, prospective um, geology. So by building up this series of points where we can work out where we are within the various systems, what we're hoping is that that will then take us towards one or more um, um, uh, copper discoveries. And this is just what's happening with Kavango at the Karakubis Copper, Copper Project in Botswana. But let's just um, change track a little bit in terms of how things are progressing with your project in Zimbabwe. Now you're actively drilling out there. Tell us what's the latest. As we know, you're waiting for assay results. Is there anything that you can share? Um, there's nothing I can say directly at the moment, but we are moving at pace. Uh, we've completed drilling at Prospect 2. 
Uh, we've moved to drill prospect three now. Uh, we're looking at the size of the system there. We've got another six holes that are planned. Uh, we've got the NARA deep hole results that we're still just waiting on. Hopefully we'll have those any day days. We are extremely encouraged by what we've seen so far. We've already put that out in, in the news flow, so we can talk about that quite openly. We started mining in Zimbabwe as well, and uh, we have plans for um, expanding that operation quite significantly. But everything that's happening in Zimbabwe at the moment, I mean, the business is moving at such a fast pace. We've, we've only been operational there since July last year. And uh, the, the speed at which everything has come together from making our first discoveries through to getting into mining. And we hope we're on the verge of being able to define our, our first um, larger scale mineable deposit. And from that point onwards, it will be a race to, to bring that deposit into production. So at the moment, I don't think the market is really giving us the credit for the pace that we're moving at, either in Botswana or in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwe projects are particularly exciting because the commercial potential there is so much more achievable and nearer term. And then we have this enormous blue sky upside in the in the drilling that we're doing in Botswana. So I said in the RNS today, it's a very exciting time to be involved in, in Kavango. And I'm really, really looking forward to what happens over the next six to 18 months. Exciting time indeed. Well, thank you, Ben, for speaking to us today at Stockbox. And no doubt we'll be speaking to you again soon and covering these exciting developments that are happening with Kavango. You will indeed. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.